All right, let's take a look at the projects now. For our project, which is a major component of the course, what we want you to do is go beyond what we've taught you in the syllabus. We want you to take your interests and passion and find several other teammates that are in this course that you can work with. Part of the teammates will be up to you and part of it will be a stochastic variable which will match like-minded people like yourselves to each other. We want you to be, be able to produce higher order learning outcomes through the creation, synthesis, and analysis of machine learning algorithms on data sets or problems of your interests. We want you to also dialogue substantially with your peers and with your instruction staff about your projects. Now, just like the normal part of the course, the project component has its own subcomponents. And the nice thing about it is that there's a lot of documentation out for it already that's prepared for you from our previous semesters. So we'd say the most important part is to start here with the project guidelines document. But even if that, which contains all of the other rubrics for all of the components, you might have a hard time getting started. This is why our TAs have been kind enough to compile a quick start guide, which will help you in making key decisions about your project, even at the very beginning. You can read that right now. Anyways, to give you a walkthrough about this, basically you'll have six components, a proposal, an interim pro uh, consultation, and maybe a second one if you happen to give your project in the public projects showcase. And then all together, towards the end of the semester, you'll be making three deliverables, a presentation, a poster, and a non-technical video. And then finally, at the end of the semester, you'll be creating your final report. Now, as I said, at the beginning of the semester, even before the midterm, we have a couple of very key components of the project. First and foremost, even in next week, we'll be doing some project work. We'll have a large Zoom tutorial, which will feature baker breakout rooms so that you can get to know some of your classmates and perhaps find a teammate or two. You'll need to form groups of size three which we'll call subteams, which we're going to subsequently algorithmically array you into larger teams of size five or six. That will happen in week three. After that, you'll have one week as a team to come up with a non-binding project proposal. You can change that project proposal later, but it's really to help you get started thinking about that. And I'll talk to you more about that later. So with project proposals, you will also have to do peer reviews. Now peer reviews are a really important part of this course because we feel it's very important for machine learning students to be able to communicate what they've done to others. And who better to concentrate your communication with than peers in your class? You're going to be doing this at least twice, once with the project proposal another time with the free deliverables later. After the first exam, you'll meet with us for the initial project consultation and decide whether you want to participate in the public showcase or just want to go it a little easier. Either way, you're going to have a poster as well as a non-technical video to present together, which will form one of the core deliverables. And finally, all groups will report in in the last week to finalize their report that will be turned in in the very last day of the semester. Now there are some common issues that we see students dealing with through doing their projects. One is to keep the project of the right scope. What we mean by that is that data sets can be hard to come by. You need to sometimes collect them or at least find the right ones. We definitely recommend for this first machine learning course to find a data set that's easy to work with. The other part of the problem commonly lies in teams wanting to apply deep learning or deep reinforcement learning. 
These types of projects take a lot of compute power and require a lot of data, so they take a lot of time to process. You need to be aware of that and have a mitigation or a contingency strategy in case things don't quite work out. Many times it's good to back off to a traditional machine learning project where you engineer features in order to get good performance. You also need to reference prior work, and I'll talk about this on the next slide. And make sure that you allow everyone in your group to work together. It's not fair to relegate certain members of the group just to do the peer review. Everyone should be getting their hands dirty in machine learning. It's important and vital to make sure that you get a good chance to participate and have a first-hand experience with the machine learning. It's not just the mathematics part, but also the execution of projects. Now, like I said, you need to be able to credit others when you do your work. Now, that can come in terms of scientific publications for either the code or the ideas behind other people's projects that you might find useful for executing yours. But it's also really important to give credit where credit is due for other things. For example, for audio clips or video or images that you might borrow for your posters or your presentations. Cite them where they're appropriate. Give links to websites and credit others, especially through your work independent statements when you upload your work. Now I'll talk about the project proposal separately, but let's go over some of the other details that you'll have to learn about on your own. Now key to this is one of the other deliverables that you have towards the end, which is the poster summary. The poster is a summarized version of your intended final report, but you have a couple more days or even a week or two, depending on which type of project you choose to turn in your final report. You'll need to have your title, abstract, and your team members' names to get all of this done. And the important part is to create a poster that's eye-catching that will help your examiners and your peers remember what you presented. The poster itself, if we're lucky enough and COVID is not rearing its ugly head anymore, will be featured actually in place in examination session where you actually have to print out an A1 size poster courtesy the School of Computing and our sponsors. It will be structured in an orientation that's portrait, and you'll need to make sure that you have a really high resolution single slide that has an A1 size format that you can print out. You'll be submitting these posters either directly to us or to the STEPS public portal so that we can showcase it publicly to outsiders. On the other hand, we also have a non-technical summary we'd like you to do, and that's the video. The video is supposed to be like doing science communications for laymen, like people in your family, to try to explain the project to them. There's a strict time limit of three minutes to get all of this done, so you have to work on editing your video. And the important thing here is to communicate the high-level findings and structure of your machine learning project rather than the technical details. We find this artifact pretty useful because sometimes your posters or your code won't persist for very long, but videos happen to have a very long lifespan. You can still find old videos on the web that have maybe many views because they've been around for such a long time. These artifacts are pretty good actually to help you find your first job or internship. <laughs>